seven different ways to improve your borrowing capacity. Number one is push out your loan terms on any existing mortgages back out to 30 years. Now, this is only for like active investors. If you plan to just own one home and pay it off, then this is probably not the best thing for you to do. But pushing your loan terms back out to 30 years, what will that do? They'll reduce your repayments, which can also help increase your borrowing capacity. Number two, go rent out one or two extra spare rooms inside your house to get some extra cash and then formalize it on paper. Number three, this is a powerful question, is ask your broker how much does your income need to increase by in order to borrow the money required to buy the next deal? So don't assume that you're just stuck. Ask the question. You'll be very surprised that you might only need to make a little bit extra. Which brings me to point number four, go and get a part-time job for like two or three days a week. Believe it or not, those who have come to me who don't have enough borrowing capacity and say, for example, all you need to be able to borrow is say $400,000, on average, those clients only needed to increase their income by somewhere between fifteen dollars to $30,000 over a whole year's average, which for them just meant go getting a part-time job for just one or two days a week extra on top of their normal full-time job. And usually you only need to do that for like six months just to get the deal across the line. But if it's a part-time job, the broker can use that income from day one. So you don't need to physically be in the job for six months. You just need to stick out it for six months. Number five, this is the biggest thing. Go be a rent vester. So if you own your own home that you live in right now, go and ask your broker, hey, if I was to rent this house out for this amount, and then I personally go and rent somewhere else for this amount, then how much will my borrowing capacity be? For a majority of people who have an average mortgage starting off, a lot of people, their borrowing capacities would go up. And last but not least, make sure that you're getting the highest amount of rental incomes on your properties. I am forever reviewing uh, existing properties for people coming my way and I see that there's a huge opportunity where a lot, of, a lot of their existing properties are being under rented. I've created a lot of video content on this so scroll through my newsfeed and you'll be able to see some other videos that I've created on how to make sure that you're getting the most amount of rent for your existing properties. Actually one more last one that I forgot. Don't take one answer from one broker. <laughs> so in Australia there are over 440 different lenders. 440 different people, lenders, willing to give you money. Now, in Australia, what most people don't know is most brokers only have about 40 to 50 lenders on their panel, which means only 40 to 50 potential of those, potential 450 uh, lenders that they're actually seeing how much you can borrow by. So sometimes it's worth going to speak to three or four different brokers and asking them, hey, how much can I borrow? And if I can't borrow that much, what do I need to do to lift this income? When I couldn't borrow money one time, I once went to eight brokers. So if you really want an elite team of brokers on your team, uh, click the link in my bio, book in a free 15 minute call, and I can have my team look at it for you.